Rebecca. Good morning. I'm going to get us ready five seconds early. Um, because there have been um, in the news some unsafe events happening in various uh, public gathering places, I do want to review what our safety plans are. Number one, we do ask those who are serving in worship, um, if they have a cell phone, to keep their cell phone with them. And whoever happens to be working in worship, just always maintain what I call situational awareness. What is normal around you, what's not so normal. Um, if something seems unsafe or inappropriate and you're one of those people who notices and has a phone, the most important thing you can do is hide somewhere and complete a call. Never feel like you're doing something cowardly by running and hiding to complete a phone call, number one, okay? So if you're a person who has a phone and feels able to complete a phone call in the event of need, raise your hand. See, you're deputized. Um, we do have special um, strange little rubber things on the doors on this side and this side. It makes it impossible for the choir to be locked into place. So no one can trap you, and we do have that uh, throughout the building. But we also have it locked so people cannot come in and surprise us from the back end of the church. But you do want to know that if you need to exit, let's do the airplane thing, <laughs> okay? Our exit back here. Um, that you can get to from these sides, but also we have an exit right over here and an exit over here. So I want you to be aware of it. Your best exit may be in front of you. In the event that somebody is behaving in an unbalanced and unsafe way, you may find that um, if they're distracted in this direction, you want to head that direction. Um, your best bet is always to run. In the event you cannot run, your next best bet is to hide. Okay? Run, hide, and don't look back. You want to move to a safe place. Try not to get herded back into a place of unsafety. You want to keep moving away and encourage others to move with you. If others are afraid and they freeze and you're a person who can always run, raise your hand to someone if you can always move and you're like, I'm going. It is your job to say, come with me, run. And you just say that. Yeah, okay. Um, but if you know you can't, Commit, whatever you choose, commit to it. When you have to choose between run, hide, or fight, which are the three choices in that situation, changing your plan is dangerous. So stick to the plan that you have, okay? Do we all feel basically equipped as we are anywhere in life? Do this everywhere you go. Check where your exits are anywhere you go. And be prepared with these plans anywhere you go, okay? And as, the more you have that preparation, uh, the better off we will all be. All right, I hate to start that way, but people hate for me not to start that way because people are worried, and I've gotten several texts, so now you know. Okay, so we do want to begin our worship by letting uh, the church know that you are here. We want to celebrate the gift of your presence, and so you can use the QR code. You'll find that in your pews. Also, if you have what's called the Realm app, which is a software that we use for the church, you can actually do a check-in right on Realm using the dot 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 feature in the right hand corner it works really well and we are ready to say we're here in worship now if you hate both those options just go to the welcome center on your way out and sign in the old-fashioned way and we'll know you're here and we're so glad that you are friends i'm pastor chris mclean it is my privilege to be the lead pastor here at shady grove let us open our hearts for worship song will rise today of a king so great who rules the universe but calls us all by name oh we are set apart oh this knows who we are we Kingdom. 
chill bumps. I don't know what would. Would it? Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please stand and join me in singing our opening hymn, Spirit of God. Uh, it is in the faith we sing, 2117, and we're going to sing verses 1, 4, and 5.
You may be seated. Let's invite the children to come on up for the children's moment. morning. I'm so glad you're here. Come on up, buddy. I'm so glad you're here. That's awesome. So this morning, the lesson is about the time that God sent a big, strong wind and flames of fire to the friends of Jesus. The big, strong wind and the flames of fire let them know that God's special helper, the Holy Spirit, was there with them. Just imagine what it would be like if a big, strong wind came in here right now and blew everybody's hair all up crazy, and then, and then there were flames of fire over your grandparents and your parents and everybody's heads. Do you think that that would make you want to do something? Would you want to do something? Sure, yeah. Well, I want to show you this wind tube here to have it make noise you have to do something you have to move it with movement things can happen and it starts you can hear it. you hear it a little bit yeah 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 well you'll have to work on it a little bit <laughs> And my singing bowl, on its own, it doesn't make a noise, but if you do something, if you start to move, it starts to make a noise. It just kind of goes on, right? And we're sort of like that, too. As God's Spirit moves us, we become the body of Christ in the church and in the world. And when we, the people of God, come together and move together, God's spirit is active and moving us. And we experience God working and acting through us. Without movement, nothing can really happen. And it's hard to be the church, the body of Christ, without reaching out into the world, without movement. But as the church, as we get active and move, you hear it? Good, good. And then you're probably stronger than I am, and you can probably really make it sing. God sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and to help us. And our part is to do something, to move into the world and share God's love with others. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. To be, with us, to be with us and to help us, to help us move, into world, move into the world to share your message, to share your message and, your and your love with others. With others. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to Sunday school and we'll go right on the side over there. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture passage for today comes from the New Testament, the book of Acts, the second chapter, the first 21st verses. Please hear these exciting words from the scriptures. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygia, and Phophilia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now is the time. Let us pray. Holy God, send the gift of your Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit, speak your word to your people to build them up for your work in the world. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Dun, 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 dun. Anybody know that? They say it's your birthday. It's my birthday, too. They say it's your birthday. We're going to have a good time, right? They say it's your birthday. That's right. Happy birthday, church. We're starting off with a birthday song by the Beatles, so that's why it sounded so old. But we started that way because it is the church's birthday. It is Pentecost, which got me thinking about what is really necessary to have a birthday celebration. And some of these questions will be controversial. Just remember to have a spirit of Christian love as we work through them. Number one, is it essential to have cake for a birthday celebration? Yes. But you could have pie. Yeah, so, but not as, your birthday will still happen, right? Okay, all right. Are candles essential? Yes. You see that, I think the younger you are, the more you want the candles. The older you are, the more afraid of fire code you become. Okay. At least one, Bobby says, at least one, okay. And maybe you'll have balloons or bubbles, but, but not absolutely essential, it will still be your birthday. Does your birthday have to be celebrated on a certain day? No. What a weird time for them. Beanie believes your birthday needs to be on your birthday. Yes. And she thinks you should live like it's your birthday every day. Yes. Yeah. I know because she gave me a card that says live every day like it's your birthday and I keep it on my dresser at home. I see it every single day. All right. So we. It's preferable and, and seemingly very important to have cake and candles and 
apparently not necessary to do that on your birthday. But, but here's the thing. Is it necessary to have the birthday person for the birthday party? Okay, now that is needed. Now, are you going to substitute for me on my birthday? I, I don't want that, Jill. I want it for me. You can. All right, but then they're with us in spirit. So we'll put a little asterisk of the living... Is it necessary to have the person? Yes. Yes. Nobody can substitute for you at your birthday party. You have to reschedule, right? That's why it doesn't have to be on that day. Right. There is no substitute for you on your birthday. Remember that. And we're glad you were born. And today is the church's birthday, so there's no substitute for the church. But how do we know that this gathering of people is the church? Does the building make you church? No. No. See, they've heard a lot of sermons. <laughs> All right. You know that a gathering of people is the church by four marks. The church is one, it is holy, it is Catholic, and it is apostolic. And you might be thinking, what? Yes. These are the marks of the church. And we say the church is one, right? The church is one. Say one. one. The church is not two, 10, or 11. The church is one. And why is that true? The church is one because we have one hope, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, one body of Christ, and one spirit. It joins us together into one. And the church is holy. Say holy. holy. Holiness is a quality of God. And so for the church to be holy, that's God's gift. It means that God is with us, making us holy as God is holy. And so what happens is that holiness of God works its way in us. We learn to live and love like Jesus. And as that happens, we become holy. Third, the church is Catholic. Say Catholic. Catholic. Catholic means universal. Universal. It means for all God's creation. That's how far God's love goes for the whole universe. And so if we ever met an extraterrestrial, and we would be surprised to know that that E.T., that Martian, was part of the universe, surprise to us, but not to God. And so we would want to talk church. We would want to talk to this Martian about Jesus. Okay? There is no one outside of the church's mission, care, ministry, or love, because the church is universal. Finally, the church is apostolic. Say apostolic. apostolic. Meaning from the apostles. And the word apostle means the ones sent out. So the apostles are the ones sent out by Jesus. And they end up being the ones who were there at the church's very first birthday. They're the ones who knew Jesus and they were able to pass the story of Jesus along. And so it starts off this great relay race to faith. And when you're in a relay race, like on track, what do you have to have to pass? The baton. So that baton is faith, and it's getting passed from one generation to the next. And if you think about it, your faith, you didn't make it up on your own, did you? Wasn't it taught to you? Who taught you? Sunday school, parents, right. And so then who taught them? And you follow it all the way back to the apostles. The church is one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. And we can see that from the start. You want to think about how things start. Like when my first son was born, it was Friday the 13th. It was a full moon. There was fog on the roadway. 
and a black cat ran across the street on the way to the hospital. <laughs> but when the church was born, the disciples were in the city. There was a harvest festival happening. So what, what's our harvest festival? Right around at Thanksgiving and Halloween time, harvesty stuff, right? Well, sort of that kind of time, you had people gathered in this city from all nations, which means they had different ways of dressing. If you notice, people from different nations dress a little differently sometimes and have different kind of names than maybe you've heard before and speak in different languages. And as you get to know them, you hear they have really interesting and different experiences. And maybe they see things differently than you see them about this issue or that from a very different life experience. And so here you have a gathering of all these diverse people. And here are Jesus' followers in the midst of that. They're gathered together waiting for the Holy Spirit, kind of like parents waiting for a baby to be born. Because Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to think about being one of the disciples. Think about what just happened to them in the last month or so. Their friend Jesus died on the cross. Can you even think about that being your friend and being there? And then their friend Jesus rose from the dead. And then they hung out with Jesus. And they learned more, connected more, ate together. And then Jesus ascended into heaven and promised the Holy Spirit so as you're waiting for the Holy Spirit and that much has already happened, don't you think you'd be wondering, oh Lord, what's going to happen next? And that's when the wind picked up that Kate said was blowing everyone's hair. And they didn't have hairspray. <laughs> so that, that cowlick you have back here like I do, boom. And the wind filled the house, and suddenly they could speak in new languages, and they'd never been good language students before, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. And strangers in the city around them could suddenly understand them, and that had never happened before, because they had never spoken to those people before, because they just flat couldn't. So they just kind of, you know, politely ignored each other in the produce aisle. And so people from every nation were gathered all in the same city, but weren't together. You ever go to the grocery store and you're with people, but you're not with them, right? People stayed in their groups with people like themselves who spoke their language, but now strangers started speaking their language. And you know what it means when someone's speaking your language? Yeah. I, I don't care what generation you're from. When somebody is finally speaking your language, you're like, okay, yeah. Now you're speaking my language. And when you meet someone who's speaking your language, that feels like family. You get me. I get you. And so diverse people from all over were made one in Jesus, like family, and the barriers between them went down by the Holy Spirit. That's God's work. And this unity and diversity, it's God's doing. And so Jesus' followers went from waiting to this unexpected surprise, and they knew something was definitely happening. The church was being born, and they were part of it, and they were brought together into God's work in the world. And what God birthed, what did God birth? What are we? The church. So the church was and is meant to spread. So the Spirit sent them out, which makes them apostolon, the sent out. They carry on the work of the apostles, which is what we do. The church is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic still, and, and I, I'm the church. I am the church. You are the church. We, we are, are the church, church together. There are many forces in the world, friends, and many forces even inside of us that try to pull us apart. We're meant to be together. But there are forces that pull us apart. 
We can look at, at churches of all these different denominations and think, why aren't we together? Good question. I think God asks it all the time. And so we need to remember not to be prideful or stubborn in our differences. We must remember that we are here to help each other as people, as different generations, as denominations, as nations, as one. God's gift of church teaches us to always be seeking unity. But we cannot do that alone. Who is the center of it all? Who do we keep our eyes on at all times? God, Jesus, yeah. God is the center, and we make up Jesus' one body on earth because the one Spirit of God is in us and working through us. And how, how did you get the Spirit of God to work in you and through you? How did you earn that? You didn't earn it. That's right. It was a gift of God's love and grace to you. So we need to stay focused, above all, on God. And we will discover then the unity that God makes possible. We're different, though. I don't know if you know this next song. It's called Weave, Weave. Anybody know it? It says, we are different instruments singing our own melody, each one tuning to a different key. But we are all playing in harmony in God's great symphony. Weave us together. So yes, you are all unique, different instruments, but we are brought together. Brought together in a tapestry, and I want you to think of a tapestry, it's prettier than your average sheet, right? I mean, your sheets are all the same whatever count thread you got. And they're all right for what they do, but they're not that much to look at. Do you hang sheets as decorations on your wall? I mean, unless they have a design. Not generally. But all those different colors in the tapestry are what are brought together in a masterpiece, and the church is like that. And so today our confirmands come to make firm their faith. God is weaving your threads into the tapestry, and because you are being sent out to live the love of God in the world, all the people whose language you speak, are there people who you just speak their language? Have you noticed? Those are people that you have a unique power to connect with and share the love of God with them. Friends, you are joining this relay race of faith, picking up the batons that we're passing to them. You're joining in the line of the apostles sent out. Because we're the church, and they're the church, and we're the church together. One holy Catholic and apostolic. We cannot have this party without you, church. And so in a world that is too enamored with division, can you set your hearts on unity, peace, and healing? In a world too focused on power and control or pride and fear, won't you let go and let God be your center? Let the Holy Spirit work in and through you and let Jesus have your hands. Can you let Jesus have your feet? Jesus have your voice. So that through you, God can make God's difference in the world. I had a friend that said that all the time, God's difference. And I think, I wonder what he thinks God's difference is. And where can you see God's difference being made in the world? Just look right at Jesus, right? And the difference Jesus made is the difference you're called to make. The Holy Spirit working through you. You know, there's never been anyone like you in the whole universe. Have you thought about that? There's never been anyone like you. Thank God for that. Who you are is God's greatest gift to you. I want you to say that. Who I am is God's greatest gift to me. Ready? 
who I am is God's greatest gift to me. And now I want you to look at the unique creation on your right, which is that way for you. And y'all quit cutting up back there. Good Lord. Good Lord. And give God thanks for that unique creation. Now look on your left. That's left, right? Yeah. Got it. And thank God for that unique creation. Can you receive the gifts of all these other people, different as they are from you, and the people gathered in other places across this globe? different as they are from you, and give God thanks for the gift in them, and at the same time, humbly, why humbly? So you don't run people over, right? It's hard to appreciate people when you're running them over, so you got to show up humbly, but you got to show up to bring your gift into the whole. And when you do that, you just let God surprise you with what God can do through you. So if you can do these things, and if you will do these things with God's help, then the church is in the building, and we are ready for a party. So let's sing. Sylvia, break out those old fingers. We're going to play happy birthday. <laughs> They're not old fingers. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to us. Amen.
At this time, I invite the confirmands to come forward. Lovely. I invite you to take one big step forward. And I invite your parents and family who are going to stand with you to come join right behind your confirmand. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And through confirmation, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I introduce Rebecca, who will introduce the confirmands. So for confirmation, we first up have, sorry, uh, Luke William Bergeron, Eleanor Lynn Bittner, Benjamin Scott Bleicher, Anderson Chase Boyard, Charlotte Ann Downing, and then Brady, I'm sorry, Brady Darren Gore. And then over here we have, for confirmation, we have uh, Braden Curtis Quick, Caleb Scott, sorry, Caleb Thomas Scott, Matthew McDowell Sheriff, Lincoln Anderson Smith, Preston Sinclair Sutherland, Natalie Grace Truda, and Carolyn, Caroline Dylan Wetzel. All right, welcome friends, and I invite you now to turn your little pods the other way around. So the student is now facing the pastor. Oh, well done. All right, friends. On behalf of the whole church confirmands, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, or oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please say, I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, please say, I will. And church, do you as Christ's body re reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? If so, say, amen. Amen. We will now read together the confirmation creed. So let me tell you a little bit how that is, has um, been put together. Each of these confirmands uh, wrote out a creed of what they believe about God, Jesus, life, the Holy Spirit. Um, and so then I took all of those together, saw uh, continuing common concepts. I put that in the creed. And then some of these are direct quotes from some of their creeds, so they might recognize the exact wording of some of those things. Um, so we will read it today with passion. It's long, but it's important. Let us stand with them. Our statement of faith. 
I believe God is good, kind, giving, all-powerful, and all-knowing. Creator God is the reason all of us and everything exists. God sent Jesus into the world to save us from our sins. I believe God loves me and everyone, no matter their past, present, or future. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, our Savior. He is loving and selfless. He sacrificed himself for us. He rose from the dead. He is the most important person ever. I believe the Holy Spirit is an empowering divine force, part of the Trinity. It helps guide us with hope and strength. I believe the church is an amazing, loving, supportive community that helps people to find their way to God and to serve God. The church is a shelter and calming place. I am sorry when I sin and make bad decisions. Forgiveness means showing grace, letting go of past grudges or lingering anger. I believe life is a precious gift from God that should be cherished. As a Christian, I am called to worship and love God, as well as to love and serve others. I am called to share the gospel with the world. I renew my vow to stay connected to God and be a faithful Christian, honoring God in my words and deeds. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Now we say a thanksgiving over the waters. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in final victory. Amen. Confirmands, I invite you to kneel. Um, parents, if you need to scoot out a little this way and a little that way to make room for each other in the middle, I think that would be really groovy on that side. All right. You want to assist me? And I'll assist you. All right, all those here with Luke William Berger on can step right here with him. Luke William, remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Eleanor Lynn. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Benjamin Scott, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Anderson Chase, remember your baptism and be thankful. 
And may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Charlotte Ann, remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brady Darren, remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Braden Curtis, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Caleb Thomas, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Matthew McDowell, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lincoln Anderson, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Preston Sinclair, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Natalie Grace, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Caroline Dillon Wetzel, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Confirmands, you may now rise. As members of Christ Universal Church Confirmands, Will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, please say, I will. Amen. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, please say, I will. Amen. Members of the household of God, I commend these confirmants to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. The light of Christ burns a little bit brighter here at Shady Grove because these confirmands are part of our faith family. Would you welcome them into full membership in their church? <laughs> All right, beloved, welcome. And you may be seated.
compromise and for the many blessings God has given us. May our gifts offer <coughs> our very selves. You may place your offering in the offering plates or text serve to 73256 for a secure link <coughs> to give. We now invite our ushers to come forward to receive the offering. <coughs> May we join together in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, you have given us nothing less than new life. In mission, outreach, and ministry, may we live out resurrection hope each day as we answer your call to feed your sheep. With grateful hearts, we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
let's advance one slide so I can see where we are. Great. Okay, it'll get there. Here we go. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time I invite the servers to come forward. All right, friends, the choir will receive first, and they'll follow their pattern of coming out and coming to receive and returning to their seats. Our servers are taking their place. It doesn't matter whether you're United Methodist or not, you are welcome at this table. Uh, we start at the back, and our ushers will invite people to come forward, and so the confirmands are going to be saving the best for last, right? Okay. Uh, if you would like to be anointed for healing, I'll be over here in the corner, and please come and tap me on the arm if you would like to be anointed for healing. Would you come and receive the love of God in body and blood?
people of God. Now what are you going to go do with all that? Eat cake. This is a very good answer from the front row. All right. I was reading a story in the paper about a student who was new in his school. And at the end of the year, they got yearbooks. And what do you do with yearbooks? Like three people would sign his yearbook, and the rest of his class refused to sign his yearbook. And his mom just took the risk of putting this up on Facebook about how that felt for her child. And some other students, students about your age and older, read what happened in that lower grade. And their first response was to cross that barrier into that younger grade, cross over to that child who'd been the excluded one, and they all signed it. There was a line at that classroom door of older students coming to sign the yearbook. Does that sound like sent out people reaching across differences to show that you are one? And does that sound like the holiness of God and love of God making a difference in the world? Friends, that's what you were called to do. Go be the church and live it like it's your birthday. Amen.